Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to be doing recitation worksheet 23. Uh, this is the solutions video for recitation worksheet 23. Um, a couple reminders for the course. One, today the projects are due. Um, two, next Friday uh, you guys have a quiz in this course. Um, it's obviously going to be a take-home quiz. Um, and then uh, next Monday, not this Monday, but the following Monday, um, your homework 10 11 is due. Remember, homework 10 and 11 have been combined into an extra long homework, so uh, that will be due next uh, Monday, not this Monday, so you have a little bit extra time for that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, this worksheet really focuses on causes of os oscillations, uh, which in class you discussed how the two causes of oscillations include both negative feedback and time delay. And uh, we're going to explore this a little bit deeper within the context of this worksheet. Uh, specifically, in the front page, we're going to create differential equations or change, equation, uh, change equations that help us to express both uh, steep negative feedback and time delay more explicitly. And on the second page, we're going to look at a tangible example where we see how, uh, you know, steep negative feedback and time delay results in certain behaviors in real world examples and how we could sort of work to um, alleviate a certain um, you know a certain behavior that we don't like in a real world example by uh, manipulating time delay or steep negative feedback okay so with that being said let's go ahead and get started uh, the logistic equation predicts that when a small population is introduced to a new habitat, it will smoothly grow until reaching carrying capacity and then level up. However, what we often observe in such cases is an overshoot and collapse pattern um, in which the population grows to a high density and then crashes. Let n be the adult population. So we have the variable that defined here. So we're letting n be the adult population of some population, of some um, animal population. And we, be, we wish to use the following assumptions to model this system. One, the total birth rate is a logistic function of the adult population. Two, after being born, individuals take time units to mature into adults. And three, adults have a constant per capita death rate of D. Okay, so we're gonna slowly, uh, just like we've been doing with all of the change equations that we've constructed in this class, we're gonna slowly go through each bullet point and construct the change equation for n prime of t, um, where t is time. Notice that in the past, maybe you didn't put the t, but there's always an implicit t implied. So now I'm gonna implicitly put t because there is gonna be a time delay that I have to account for. And so to make things a little bit more clear uh, where we're doing calculations based on the current time t, or a time in the past, t minus tau, I'm gonna actually include t in my change equation. So the first bullet point tells us that the total birth rate um, is a logistic function of the adult population. And so what we're gonna do is um, recall what the logistic function looks like. It looks like the following. Um, R times um, N of T, one minus N of T over K. So I know this is um, going to be added because it's my birth rate, so um, it's going to be a positive logistic function. So this is our logistic function, we've seen it before, um, where K is our carrying capacity. And R is our birth rate. And we've seen it before, and it's actually the first example that we saw when we did, uh, when we studied uh, equilibrium points in one-dimensional systems, and we saw that zero was an equilibrium point in the one-dimensional system, but so was K. And in fact, um, K was a stable equilibrium point, meaning that if we had a population over K, uh, there weren't enough resources to support that population. And so what we would see is that the population would actually just go back to K, which is why we call it the carrying capacity. And so uh, we just sort of captured the first bullet point that tells us how the um, how n prime increases. Um, now we need to take into account the next bullet point. So after being born, individuals take tau time units to mature into adults. So we observed that in the first bullet point, it told us the birth rate, 
but what we're trying to model by n as written here is the adult population. And so we can't really just take into account um, this equation right here uh, because we're actually just um, because just because you're born um, doesn't mean you contribute to the population n. You only contribute to the population n when you become an adult. And so we need to introduce some kind of time delay that allows for this birth, um, these animals that are being born to eventually mature into adults. And the way we do that is to incorporate this time delay by subtracting tau. Yeah. So the adult population is contingent on um, birth, which is captured by this logistic equation at tau time. Uh, so the adult population at a time t is contingent on this birth, which is captured by the listing equation um, at tau units of time before. Okay, so we've accounted for two bullet points now. So we're done with that and we're done with this. Uh, all we need to do is the last bullet point. So adults have a constant per capita rate d, uh, which means the last thing we need to do is a simple thing. We just need to do d minus n of t. Notice there's no time delay in this. Um, and uh, also note that per capita death rate, uh, per capita tells us that we should be multiplying d by n at time t. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna move on to the next um, problem. Um, so the next problem states that the Gar Garibaldi is a large orange fish that lives off the coast of California. Use the assumptions below to write a differential equation or a change equation if you prefer for the size of an adult Garibaldi population. All right, so let's first begin by defining our variables. Let's use the color blue. Um, so we have, um, we want to find an equation for the adult Garibaldi population. So I'm gonna say A is equal to the adult Garibaldi population. And we want to look at A prime of T and what this is equal to. Um, okay, and we're just like before, we're gonna go bullet point by bullet point to figure out what this looks like. So the first bullet point uh, tells us, or the first point tells us that the adult Garibaldis lay eggs and a fraction of those eggs hatch, i.e. a baby fish comes out of the egg. Um, only a portion of those baby Garibaldis survive to adulthood. So note again, once again, we're interested in the adult Garibaldi population. And so what this first uh, point is telling us is that, um, okay, so they lay eggs, but only a fraction of those eggs actually hatch and only a fraction of those hatch actually make it to adulthood. What we wanna capture in our A prime is those that make it to adulthood given that A um, is equal to the adult Garibaldi population. And so what we're gonna do is the following. We're gonna look at the next bullet point. We're gonna say that, okay, uh, Garibaldi's lay eggs at a uh, constant per capita rate B. Um, so let's model that. They lay eggs at a constant per capita rate B. So uh, what that's telling us is that they lay eggs um, B times A. Okay, because Garibaldi sometimes eat their own eggs, the fraction of eggs that hatch is a declining sigmoid function of the adult population. And so what we're gonna do is actually multiply B times A by um, what is described in this bullet point, which is because they uh, sometimes eat their own eggs, um, the fraction of eggs that hatch is a declining sigmoid function of the adult population. And so to describe that more explicitly, um, we learned in class what a sigmoid function looks like, and explicitly a decreasing sigmoid function has the following form with respect to A. One over uh, one plus A of N, where N is controlling the steepness, steepness sorry, of that sigmoid function. And so what this term is telling us and I should be explicit right now. So right now it's gonna be of t, right? We're just assuming of t right now. If it changes later on, we will make those changes bullet point by bullet point. Um, but what this expression is, is telling us is the uh, fraction of eggs, spell eggs right, um, that hatch, right? And what we really want is um, the ones that become adult. They don't just hatch, but they 
live long enough to mature to adulthood. And this uh, third bullet point allows us to incorporate that into our change equation. So because Garibaldi sometimes eat their own eggs, oops, sorry, I meant fourth. Um, so larval Garibaldi floats as planktons before becoming adults and joining a population. Thus, the number of individuals joining a population is proportional to the number of eggs that hatch six years earlier with a pro proportionality constant um, of R. And so what this is saying is that the number or the, uh, the what we want to consider here is the, the uh, proportion that actually makes it to adulthood. And what's telling us is that the number of individuals joining a population is actually proportional to the number um, that hatch. So what we've already written six years ago though, not just at T, but six years ago. So we have to incorporate this by a time delay. So we can simply do that by just saying t minus 6, t minus 6. So A evaluated at t minus 6. So this is the fraction of eggs that hatched six years ago now. And, um, is, and it's proportional to with a uh, proportionality constant of r. So we multiply this entire term by r. And we're done in terms of um, those four bullet points. So now we just look at the final bullet point, which tells us that adult Garibaldi's die at a constant per capita rate D, uh, which just tells us that um, because we have a per capita here, we have to subtract D times A of T. Not T minus six, but just T. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll just go ahead and box the answer so it's nice and clean. Um, so it's really, you know, just like before, these change equations are really just about uh, following the instructions and um, making the choices as you follow in the instructions. Um, what's new about these change equations opposed to the change equations we considered before is that there we are incorporating a time delay in some areas. Uh, so we're being a little bit more explicit about if we're considering calculating n at t or t minus tau, where tau is some unit of time. Um, and also we are including, um, what, what's also new is we're including these uh, functions that represent uh, population growth or decline. Okay, um, and the two functions explicitly are logistic, is a logistic function and a uh, decreasing sigmoid function. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, page and this page is really more of a tangible example that talks that allows us to talk about um, causes of oscillation specifically um, they are caused by steep negative feedback and time delay so let's go ahead and read this um, imagine you're driving on a highway and you've just made your way out of a very frustrating traffic jam you look for the reason of the traffic jam such as an accident or ro uh, road work but there is nothing you can see examples such as phantom traffics on these videos. Um, I'll allow for you guys to explore that on your own. Um, but essentially what's happening in these videos is um, you see that uh, cars are going around in a circle and uh, without anything like major happening or really um, pointed happening such as like a uh, some kind of road work or accident occurring, you actually see traffic jams occurring, which can be unintuitive because it seems like if we're all going the same speed and maintain the same distance, uh, we should probably not end up with any kind of traffic jam, but actually they are occurring. And so uh, the goal of this exercise is to allow you to think about why these things may be occurring uh, with respect to the tools we've developed in this class. So that being said, let D of T, um, let D of T be the distance between your car and the car preceding you. So I've drawn a little image here of cars. Um, they look like more like turtles, but let's pretend they're cars. Um, so let D not be the optimal distance between two cars um, and use the concepts seen in class to explain the causes of the phenomenon and suggest ways it could be fixed. Okay, so in thinking about causes of the phenomenon, um, we can think about um, why these traffic jams are occurring, right? And the idea is that, okay, if you, this is, if you are, and we don't have to like explicitly think about it in terms of D of T, but we can talk about it more generally. Um, but what is happening is um, essentially the car, you and you maintain a distance of D naught between you and the car in front of you. And possibly what could happen because we live in an imperfect world is that this optimal distance probably will not be maintained perfectly um, throughout, right? So 
um, you can, if you wish, you can think of it as an unstable equilibrium point, D naught. And um, what's happening is, uh, okay, so say that the car in front of you slows down a little bit and you have a distance of D1 in front of you instead, where D1 is shorter than D naught. Then um, what is happening is essentially um, you or some, the car, bef this car, um, it is something that could be happening is that it's slowing down too aggressively, which causes in order to sort of overcorrect for D not shrinking. And this might cause uh, traffic behind it because the cars behind it have to slow down and eventually bundle up. So, um, you know, the phenomenon is essentially being caused by overcorrecting in behavior. So what you have going on, um, which is something you've seen in class, is okay, you have this optimal distance of D naught, and um, if a car uh, slows down, um, you know, D naught sort of decreases, and the person riding this car might get nervous and um, try to increase the distance between you and the car in front of you, and then that would result in a traffic jam being um, occurred behind you, which eventually, because we're going in a circle, as the car uh, starts to uh, speed up eventually, right? Because um, um, it starts to speed up, and then um, you have this oscillation pattern going on, um, which is caused by time delays and negative feedback loop. Um, so, one way to, you know, this could be fixed is okay, um, the two things that cause uh, this kind of oscillation behavior is time delay and uh, steep negative feedback. And so um, while time delay or your reaction to the car can't really always be fixed, something that can be introduced that allow for this sort of, sort of phenomenon to be fixed um, that we saw in class. So tau is high. So in this case, tau is high. So time delay is high. And um, the uh, n is high as well, where n is controlling the steepness of the negative feedback. Uh, so n is high. So one option would be to reduce n uh, or make n smaller. And what we saw in class is if we make n smaller, what happens is, um, so if you basically, what that corresponds to in this particular example is you are not, you don't overcorrect for um, a car in front of you slowing down. What will eventually happen is, okay, so say that you, uh, say that it slows down eventually, and then you overcorrect a little bit, but eventually it'll even out and go to equilibrium. And I'll just share that the different behaviors that you guys saw in class so you can get a sense of this um, and to give you inspiration as to why this may be case. So what you saw in class particularly was uh, this particular image. And originally we have these oscillations, which is caused by high T and high N, so high time delay and high N. Um, time delay, meaning your reaction may not be able to be fixed, but what can be fixed is potentially uh, decreasing, the, um, decreasing the slope of our negative feedback loop or um, not overcorrecting for behavior. So uh, this is a potential thing that can be fixed and um, one opportunity to allow for uh, us to maintain an optimal distance between you and the car in front of it, and if all the cars are doing it, um, not cause traffic jams. Yeah, so with that I'll end. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy. Bye.